Can someone confirm me if you can uh, hear me? Uh, Neha, can you confirm? Or uh, Tristan's mom, if you can again confirm it. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect, perfect, okay, all right. So let's get started. All right, so um, thank you for joining um, the session today. Um, the reason, as we know, that uh, the schools uh, will be um, closed beyond April 5th, um, as you know, that is for the safety of all of us uh, to limit the spread of COVID-19. And that's the reason um, I thought that it's better we as a family come together and um, talk about the, some of the activities which um, kids can um, do it at home. Um, now, um, just for my background, um, I'm an IT consultant, um, over two decades of experience, um, mostly work on the um, um, information technology area and some of the digitalization area. And um, I have been um, helping the small kids um, in our neighborhood uh, since one and a half year for this STEM education. So I have a lot of resources. So that's why I thought that, um, you know what, I'm having some knowledge, so it's better to share with the other parents. Um, and then we all have a lot of resources, like for an example, um, online, if you go for it, then there are so many resources, but it's like overwhelming, right? Like what we wanna use it for our children, um, practically using it like we know it uh, probably but uh, to pass that activity to the children um, where they can actually do this activity at home right that's the that's the whole purpose um, where they get occupied it so i mean if we come together and then if we discuss about the activity um, that way children and as a parent we all discuss it and then um, that activity we can um, accommodate into our um, weekly schedule. So it's more about um, focusing um, we as a parent and then the children. And then I try to find out some of the tools um, which probably we can use it. Um, and then you as a parent can evaluate it, what is good for your children. And then you try to implement and uh, put it in a like, kind of weekly schedule. Um, so it's more about discussion, walk through about some of the tools and whatever the like, it's more about like uh, the activities which I'm going to share it. These are no um, affiliated marketing or any sponsored product. It's just, um, I feel that this something um, could be useful. And then it's just like um, getting started point where you see it, um, you accommodate it or while you watching this or doing this activity, if you find something better than this, then accommodate it, right? So it's just a starting initiating point um, where it's better to talk with someone and then um, we schedule it something what is better for us, right? So that's the whole point of this um, educational workshop, nothing more than that. As a, as a family, as a community, we want to do something for our own children. That's the whole purpose. Now, um, Let's get started about the topic, what we are going to do. Um, uh, this would be um, ranging from, let's say, 30 minutes to an hour session. Um, and again, um, it's, this is something I'm doing it only for our, I mean, for the community purpose, okay? So um, I have my own job right now, uh, for the God's sake, it's, 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 it's a well doing, we are the essential business. And during my the work time, I'm, I took that this time off. I talked to the, my uh, employer, and they are they are happy to allow this time. Um, so it's not something I'm going to sell something or any of those kind of purpose. No reason behind. It's just community build up program, and as a family, um, we want to work together. That's the whole purpose. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do talk about is is awareness about the social distancing. A um, little bit, um, then um, health is a wealth. So how we can keep ourselves healthy and stay safe um, during this time. So some of the, those resources. Um, then we will touch about some of the, uh, the academic topics um, so like uh, science and math. Um, some of the tools which you can use it, which I thought that um, um, it could be useful. 
And then we also talk about some of the STEM, um, STEM projects or the, the hands-on activity. So I'm just trying to give you these um, tools and then you can accommodate in your um, day-to-day schedule, as I said before. Okay, and I'm not going to overwhelm with the, so many tools because now if you go to the, the Google on the blocks, you will find hundreds of tools, right? But then how many we are going to use it in our uh, day-to-day life or to the children, how much we pass it on to them, right? So that's why we focus on a couple of tools um, where um, we will go through it and then let's see um, if that's something suitable for you or not. Okay, um, so we as you see I, I was just reading in the morning um that um during the weekend um there were a lot of people who in the downtown toronto uh, they gather into the park right um so this the the government is is trying to help the i mean they're trying to aware the people that it's not a time right now to go into the crowd even um like going to the park is you are putting yourself in a risk and if the things get out of control then it's very difficult even for the government hospitals um to um to help us right so they they are actually launching a paid campaign to make the people aware that don't go outside i mean as far well as you are staying at home and if you're essential then definitely you need to go for it but if not then stay at home that's that's the whole purpose right now and that's what they're trying to educate it so um, there are a lot of terms coming up saying that okay breaking the chain and then um it's saying um flatten the curve right so i would like to show you something visuals what actually that mean okay um, there are some nice footage um, which they are talking about it, about the breaking the chain. So I'll just show you briefly, and then um, I will go into the um, the other topics which you wanna go for it. Okay? Hopefully you can see this. So here you see that this is a matchstick which is getting like fire by right now. You see, and then this one person is going out of it. So that, was, that person came out of it and then it, it stopped the whole chain, like what is going on. And that's the exactly, I think the government is trying to convey that if you go for it and then you are putting yourself as a risk, like this is the fire which is going on. So that's why they are saying that break the chain. This guy who came out from that, probably in terms of what they can convey is like staying home. And that's why the, this chain has broken. So that's exactly what I think uh, the government is on is trying to explain that break the chain and that's by the breaking the chain only we can um defeat um what's going on um in outside body okay then um there's a washington post has um, made one more um, a blockchain um so i think is they're talking about um flattening the cow by washington post um I think they are they are they are referring it here. Um, okay, let me just do it here. Yeah, downloaded that link. Flatten the curve here. So, which I said, this is very very important. I think this somebody is very very nice illustrated when we talk about the flatten the curve. So, let I wanted me... to show you this simulation on how transmission of diseases work by the Washington Post. In this model of around 200 people, assume one person gets sick. Now see how rapid the disease spreads when there are no precautions taken. It gets crazy. Now compare it to when only one quarter of the population is on the move while the other three quarters responsibly practice what's called social distancing. Look at the curve now and how flat it is compared to before. And to be more specific, see how slow it gets down to when only one in eight people tend to move around. Observe how much flatter the curve gets now. The point I want to make here is the degree to which we can get the curve to flatten is so doable. The flatter the curve, the lesser the speed of the spread. Simply put, we can spare more beds in our hospitals just by staying home, thereby sparing more lives. 
in a realistic scenario, this particular simulation should lose some dots when the number of cases exceeds what our hospitals can handle. It's in our power to stop the curve from going exponential. All we have to do is be responsible, educate people around you, and stay so you see, this is clearly explaining that when the number of cases goes higher and then the people, when we have a lot of movement and that's the number of cases gets more. That's why you see that the, compared to two weeks, now the new cases, what you see, it, it's getting more. So that's why they are saying that keep the social distance and break the chain. Um, now let's go for the, um, how we can help ourselves, right? Um, I think this is when we are in the staying home, this is also it's a good time to think about we as a family. Um, it's a good time to, to exercise it, right? So it's, it's a, before like it was like we're going out and we are so busy in our routine. Um, and sometimes we forget about taking about our uh, care about ourselves. I mean, this is the perfect time where we, we as a parents and children are at home even when we are working from home at the evening, we, we are still saving that travel time, right? And then um, that time we can utilize um, for um, doing the exercise or let's say for the meditation. So that way we can keep ourselves um, healthy, staying safe, but at the same time, it's a good time to introduce that habit to our own children. Like if this would have to happen, then I don't know, if this many people had this opportunity. So, I mean, this is a positive where there's opportunity where we can, as a parent and children, uh, work together on the exercise and also the, the med meditation where we keep ourselves more focused and concentrate. So for that purpose, um, I, I was just searching for it and I found some a nice um, tool. Um, let me open that up, I think I have that exercise. And this resource is what I'm going to share that you will get it, um, we are, um, I will post it onto the uh, inspire.ca website and I'll show you how you can access it later on, okay? So don't worry about that. Um, uh, before that, uh, there is also, okay, let's go for this first meditation. So there's one um, a nice um, link over here. This actually- Welcome and thanks for Joining me on this video is um, created by the Khan Academy. Now, if you probably you might have heard, the Khan Academy is one of the uh, very well-known uh, not-for-profit organization. Um, they create a lot of uh, good stuff for the children. So they have uh, many other things uh, which probably uh, can help you later point of time if you wanna review their um, uh, website and the YouTube channel. But this is one of the nice videos. It's about like 11 minutes and 45 um, seconds. But it's, it's, in my opinion, this timing for the meditation is good for the children. Um, I've been trying with my kids. Um, uh, we already tried it. Initially, they try to here and there, here and there. But I mean, it's, it's good to get started. And then um, it's become a um, practice for them. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll this play it for a couple of minutes and then I'll stop the it mind. because we have a lot of other... So before things. we begin, posture and breathing make a big difference in meditation. So if you're not already on a nice firm chair with your back straight, pause this recording and go find a nice firm chair with your back straight, ideally in a place that's kind of quiet and peaceful. So now that you're there, sit with your back straight. Try to put your feet firmly on the floor. When I do this, I like to rest my hands on my lap, palms up, gently curled, so really no effort. And now start to slowly breathe a bit deeper than you were. Okay, so this probably you can accommodate it in your schedule. I mean, this I, I like it, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and then if you find out something better than this, then definitely. But this is, as I say, this is a good starting point. Um, I, I'm personally using this and um, it's, it's pretty good. Um, the second one is um, kids workout. So this is also pretty good. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Mojones. Mojones. 
and Hi, everyone. My name is Maurice. I'd like to thank you for making a conscious decision to get in shape. Now, this video is for all ages, for kids, teens, and adults. Now, the exercises we put together will help you to build muscle, tone muscle, build flexibility, and enhance your coordination. Exercises from front to back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Shoulder rotation. Five to the front and then five to the back. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five. Back. Okay. So. Um, this is pretty good and then uh, they also have many other uh, the workout video this is you see this is the beginner video but then there are a lot of other videos so what we do it with my children is um, in a basement we put it um, iPad and then uh, with uh, as a family we go with this uh, video I mean it's pretty good I, I like it I mean um, it's, it's, it's much better way where they're showing up to, ki uh, to kids and then this gentleman is doing it so I like it so see it and if you want to utilize it now again, um, when we talk about the physical exercise as a, as a disclaimer, um, I want to make sure that you consider your um, the physical condition, and if you need to consult any physician, uh, the, the 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 trainer or anybody, just go for it. Um, I mean, personally speaking, this is a very um, very easy exercise. I mean, do not need it, but at the same time, it's a disclaimer. Um, I mean, we won't be responsible if you injure yourself or whatever. Um, happens right so um, just to be fine disclaimer whenever we work with this kind of um, the physical exercise um, we want to make sure that um, we are paid for okay now um, so that's about uh, staying healthy and fit um, we talk about meditation there are many other videos probably um, there's one more video my kids like it about the minion right the banana um, so probably I will put that one also um, on that link uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's fun. The children, there are small children so who are rotating around in the banana minion. Um, the nice workout music is going on. Um, probably I will add it in the link as well. That one. Okay. Now let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so we talk about the the flattening the curve, meditation, and the workout. Okay. Um, then now let's talk about the, some of the hands-on activity. Okay. Um, I try to find out this activity where like we have a limitation right now to go outside, right? And then we have to work with the water materials, what we have in the house. So um, most of the parents, I understand that um, we have a paper. Um, so this is what um, I found it. This is something the kids love, the making the spinner, and then there's a paper spinner and then the fidget spinner. Actually, this, this we made it. Um, so it's, it's turned out to be very good. Um, let me go for the paper spinner, okay? This is pretty cool project, I like it. So let me show it to you. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find... Hello, hello, welcome to Red Ted Art. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these wonderful toy spinners. Now, they're made from paper and card, and they're um, really easy to do and really, really fun. And what's really great about them is that you can explore color theory. So you know about color theory, how yellow and red makes orange, yellow and blue make green, red and uh, blue, or red and blue make uh, purple. These spinners are great. Now, there is no need for, like, if you don't have this kind of uh, paper, I mean, um, if you have a sketch pen, that's more than enough. Like, if you do one color over here, other color on this side, and three other side, that's more than happy. But believe me, this is so easy, and it's it's uh, it's pretty good fun. Like when they spin it, it 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 spins very nicely. Like you see it when uh, at the starting of the video that when she's showing it out, it's pretty cool. Um, really like you see, and this really literally fun. works. Okay, and, and it's really very very easy. You, uh, you just follow the instruction in the video, so you know and then uh, it's good to go. I mean, the kids love it once it's done, and that's also inspired the um, their building mindset. Right, that's the whole purpose. That you give them some one project, second project, third project, and then the children themselves will try to find out something which is building building the stuff. So 
that's one of the way where you can um, um, try to get them off from the screen. I mean, still they will use the screen to watch the video, but at least they're doing something, the physical activity, right? They are, they're building something. So it's, it's a good screen time where it's a combination rather than watching some of the only consumer oriented videos. Somebody is doing something in their home and they're just watching their stuff. Uh, probably it might not help them for their own um, career perspective. So this is one of the, the spinner. Um, then uh, let me go for another one. This is called a fidget spinner. The fidget spinner is also good, which is made up of the paper and without any clip, okay? When we think dinosaurs, we tend to think of the this animals of the popular. So they have two ads. Yeah, there you go. So you see, this is a very simplest way where um, you can use the paper and the children um, can make it what we have in the house, mm -hmm. right? If it is um, like the cardboard, then also probably you can use it. That's for like kind of uh, the bearings, what they use it here, and then the simple paper. It, it, um, this is a little bit thick paper, um, but you see what is material you have it and try it. Um, we made it actually, um, this one as well and it looks pretty cool. Um, see, the children, when they buy it from outside and when they make it at home, that's the feeling of accomplishment. So once they did it, they will try to show you as a parent saying that mom and dad, look at that, this is something I made. Um, and that's, that's the feeling. And in, in my opinion, um, that's the thought process. We want to um, put it in our children. So. This is just one project I'm just showing it to you. Then you can come up with a lot of other projects. And probably you are already doing it um, at your home. But um, with, through this platform, it's like um, talking with someone um, and then now um, it's get kind of pauses with stroke and we try to put that um, topic into our kids' uh, daily schedule. So probably take it that way if you're already doing it, okay? So that's about the two physical activity. The other thing, uh, what I'm going to show you is something digital, okay? Um, if you guys have um, um, talked about, uh, I mean, heard about the, the Google 3D, this is a pretty, pretty good feature. I mean, I was preparing this presentation yesterday and uh, my wife um, told me about this and I think, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, it's more about the digital, okay? So digital technology. So um, I attended um, last time, I keep on, uh, I, I work in the digitalization IT, as I said, right? And then I keep on tracking the trains of the industry. So we, uh, there was one very nice event happened, um, it's called Elevate in Toronto, um, where they, all the thought leaders um, from the industry, education and the student, um, they, they come there. And then they think about where the industry is going on and what kind of technology is coming up. So um, this is more about the augmented reality, okay? So um, for this, I have to share my, um, my phone here, okay? So if you have a Google Chrome, okay, um, app, I'm not talking about the Google search engine, okay? I'm talking about the Google Chrome app. If you are using an Android phone or iPhone, um, you need to have a Google Chrome. And what you are going to do is, See, um, I'm going to Google Chrome here, and then I'm going to say Tiger, okay? And now I'm clicking on Tiger, okay? 
And now when I'm um, going on here on the bottom, it should say, um, okay, I'm a thing in um, Google search. I have to go to the Chrome. Okay, and now when I'm going on here, it's called, you see that 3D, view 3D, it's saying view in a 3D. So I'm going to view in a 3D and click on it. Okay, and then what happened? It actually, I'm putting it over here, okay? And then what I'm going to do, actually, um, let me put it up here somewhere. What's that? Oh, Vihan, you wanna show it? Yeah. Okay, so actually what happened, um, so you see, okay. You, you try it, then you, uh, what will happen? I have to move the phone. Okay, you do it. And then the tiger will appear there on the floor. Okay, the live tiger. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm just trying it here. Yeah. I'm trying to move it here. Object. So here you see, this is the tiger. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. 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 So the J has come up and show me. Show me. He's not. Show me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Here you can see. So here you see, that's he used it as a dog. Okay. So that dog. I mean, it's it's a pretty cool feature in the in the Google augmented reality. So. Um, you try it if you have a Chrome, and then um, you, you can choose. There are many. Uh, there are many animals out there. Um, cheetah and um, I think dog, uh, lion. Uh, there are a lot of animals there. I can you check, can, I can, you can put it on your put it on your bed, and then saying, you know what, I'm living with tiger. You see it here. <laughs> I can, pretty, I, can I can show the whole list. I can show the whole list here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have a whole list. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the kids get excited, let me tell you. And, and at the same time, they see this is something on an augmented okay. reality. So that's a, the fun way you can introduce um, this new technology to the kids. Um, it's, it's, as I said, it's a, it's a Google Chrome, you have to use it, not the Google uh, and, search, okay? And this is a and picture then, of uh, some. Literally, you can, um, yeah. <laughs> you can put it on your bed and you can take the pictures <laughs> and it's pretty cool. That, that was from <laughs> someone in mommy's office. Yeah. Okay, thank you, boys. Appreciate it. I had a hard time, but you see, the small kids pick up way faster than we as an adult. <laughs> we have to just show them the uh, We have to just show them the uh, path. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now, boys, go back, go back, go back to your your workstation. Whoa! What do you do to this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Go back, go back to your workstation. Okay, okay, okay but wait. I, it even shows sound. Okay, yeah, yeah, it comes with the sound as well. Can I hear from you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it right now. So I go here. I search up. <sighs> Let's go. Okay, we now we have to go to the next topic, Jay. Okay. Okay, we'll just go. Okay, he's showing up that the, how the dogs come because I had a hard time to show it up. And he's bringing up line. So first you'll show up like this, yeah. but you click view in your space. And then I can do this. So you kind of... You have to put it over here, that way they can so see. I can... I think you can show the picture only. I mean, okay, the parents, yeah. parents get it that one. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jay. So you see, they get excited about this one. This is pretty cool stuff. So that's about the hands-on activity, the three hands-on activity I showed it. Um, now let's talk about the mathematics. Now, uh, probably your children um, were going to the mathematics institution, uh, but for some reason now uh, it's stopped. Um, then how you can keep up with it, right? Um, same, again, there are these two 
tools, it's pretty cool. Okay, I mean, it's like the children, once they start working on it, they hook to it. And it's something very, very useful. So I'll go to this Mathis. It's called Mathis, okay. Um, it's a Canadian um, website. I think it's uh, uh, some of them is funded probably by Ontario Education. Um, but um, let me go to this here the catching a ball game and children if you are looking at it you are going to love it okay um what i'm going to do it here i am now going to the mathis and then it's saying catch bouncing ball okay and then i'm going to open it up i'm working on mac so flashing is a bit slow here normally ios is not friendly of the flash player but I think it will go through. Okay. Because every time I'm saying. Okay. So it has come to the Mathis. And now you see there are different games here. So I will start with the very simple. Okay. Addition. And then here you see there are different options here. So some to 10, some to 20, some to 50, some to 100, whichever the difficulty level you want to um, go for it. Then I will say play. Very simple, three plus two. Okay, so let me guess if I'm right. I think is eight, no, six, no, how much? I think here, five, and let me see. Oh, I know it. And then what? Three plus one. How much? Four? Four, five? Oh, no. I missed it. It should be four here, right? So you see, I, you, you, will not, um, you, you will get the points over here how much you go for it. I think they want to test it. They give me the different one now, one plus three. Now I know it's four for sure. Let me see, go for it. I know it now. So this is something um, very, very fun game. And then you can keep on going for the, the different difficulty level there. Um, let me, there. There are so many games here, okay? Um, you can you can go for another catch bouncing game. So it's a different um, different way of how these numbers are denoted here. Okay, so you see it here. These numbers is like 100, 200, 300, 400. Here is a more um, different um, fraction. So that how the children to identify uh, where exactly that number comes in. So it's not just for the counting but also the observing where these um, the, the numbers would be. So it's a multiple um, way where the children build up their mathematical skills. Um, I love this game. Uh, it's a free, in, in, there is no even, you need to have any logging. You, you don't need any register and they're not asking for any email, phone number, um, so that they get you bombardment or anything. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it, uh, this app is, um, I think this is goes beyond like, 10, 10, 13 years. So um, you might want to explore this um, um, game here. It's called mathis.ca. And um, it says also mathclip, um, mathclips.ca. Um, I mean, if the children are working on it, probably I, I, I can tell you that they will be able to build up their mathematical skill, or at least they, whatever they learn it, they maintain it because they are, um, it's, it's more like fun and everyone, most of the children likes the games um, and that way they are building up their mathematical skills. Okay, so I don't wanna go for the many other tools. There are so many tools other, um, uh, other there. Um, as I said, uh, my focus is to you as a parent and the children um, to focus on one tool at a time and, and then we go, for, for go further. Um, so we wanna do it something um, rather than watching the videos which are consumer right um then 
let's go for the next topic. Okay, so now coming for the, the area, uh, the STEM, STEM area. So um, I'm, right now the economy is standstill, but it's not going to remain here like what we are in situation. We will come through this situation and then we'll be um, running as usual before. Um, and that's the reason um, we have to keep up our children um, with the, um, the technology when they are going to enter into the, the job market um, or the um, the industry we have to build up their mindset um, their attitude which is very very important we have to keep up them with the new technologies and we have to introduce this technology right from the beginning because um, the, I think in the 2017 the the World Economic Forum who mainly track the the industry train they say that the 65 percentage of the primary and the students who are entering in a primary education will end up in the job that don't even exist so um, the new technology coming up the new um, new jobs are getting um, um, being created um, the many times we think that oh the artificial intelligence um, those kind of technology is eating up a lot of jobs like when we look at these um, when we go to the Walmart kiosk or um, the Amazon centers we see it even we go to McDonald's right so South kiosks are coming up um, replacing the labor kind of job I mean we have to see as a, as a reality see um, it's a repetitive kind of jobs um, the industry is adopting um, the machines where they can do the better job. I mean, we want, as much as we want to fight it, we can it, we don't like it, but the industry, when it's going for the change, we have to adapt to it. Um, but there are, while these jobs are going, but there are a lot of other good jobs which does not exist even before. And those jobs are pretty cool. These are high, high paying job. Um, they are high skill job. Um, and then it's making the, the people's life way easier than what we used to do it before. Like for an example, the just one I showed you, the, the 3D, um, right? I mean, just you can bring your tiger live in front of you, right? I mean, this is just for the fun, but um, there are a lot of in, in technology, um, the, the industries are using it. So um, that's the reason we have to introduce um, our kids to the STEM related technology. Now, when I say STEM, um, or we call it the STEAM, uh, is this S stands for science, T stands for technology, E stands for engineering, A stands for arts. Um, at the Inspirely, we use it A as an art, as well as we also use it as an astronomy, so aerospace related. Um, so, and then M stands for math. So it's all that's, um, the different um, area it comes under the steam and during this time i want to as a parent i want to uh, i want to realize that you spend some time um, some of this cool stuff you uh, if, if you're not already familiar i mean many of the parents are more ed educated and they know it well out of go um, but if you are not then um, just go for this um, some of the cool tools to get started okay there are a lot of other things um, so here, um, I, I, I selected one of the YouTube channel, it's called SciSo, probably some of you might be using it, but here I'm not trying to market any YouTube channel, okay, not trying to market any tools, no way, this is as I said before, there's no affiliated marketing, no uh, sponsored product, this is something I'm focusing on the topic. So here what he's saying is, what is robotics so if i go to that what is robotics um here as i say this is from the scishow and this guy explaining about the robotic process i'll I, i'll run the clip for this so i have a team based all over the world the everybody works from a home office monday.com makes it really easy for them to You'd think the robot revolution would have happened by now. With the software robots taking over the world, becoming our overlords, making us work in the tungsten mines. Well, the thing is, the robot revolution already is happening. It's been happening for decades. It's just been a lot less bloody than the movies made us think it would be. And the robots are not self-aware. 
Yet, but in all likelihood, your car was made by a robot. These days, there are robots helping spacecraft dock at the International Space Station, and you might even have one faithfully vacuuming your kitchen floor. Not exactly Skynet, but all of the convenience that we already enjoy thanks to robots took decades of hard work by scientists, and some of the problems that robotics engineers were struggling with 50 years ago still haven't been solved. So there's a whole lot of history that went into the robots that we rely on today, and it just might help you understand why we don't have robots taking care of our every need or so the rest of the video probably you can watch it um the scishow has a lot of good videos okay so i think many of the parents uh, are using this youtube channel and you can explore more there than you're liking okay so this is about the um the robotics then we were talking about the artificial intelligence okay so what is artificial intelligence so this is also something you can watch it i'm going to play on that video again here. Hi, my name is Sanjay Modkil, and I lecture and do research in artificial intelligence at the Department of Informatics in King's College, London. Have you ever considered what artificial intelligence means? Now, one could argue that artificial intelligence is only something that can be exhibited by machines. But then, how can we tell whether a machine is actually exhibiting intelligent behavior? If a robot were to behave and express and respond to you, as if it were conscious, wouldn't you ultimately think the robot is conscious? So to help think about these questions, consider a scene, say, 100 years from now. You've come home from a... I mean, we have to introduce this, um, this stuff to our children right from the beginning. There are, there's, the artificial intelligence is, is um, penetrating in industry um, heavily. There are a lot of things are being um, developed using this technology. Um, so, for an example, uh, we in Canada, um, when I was attending this elevator event, this one of the topic came up was um, that Canada is one of the very unique country where we have our health-related data, everything with the government, right? Because it's it's, it's a it's kind of the advantage for the Canada. Like in US, there are, there are the private um, um, these practitioners. Um, and in other, uh, many other countries, by like Canada, the, the healthcare system is under government. So we have a very vital information and it's in, in going forward, this data, data is a code. Like we, we can analyze this data using this technology and come up with a much better solution which can serve the community. Um, we can ahead of the curve um, by developing the solution. So you see that, I'm just trying to give you an advantage uh, where this uh, technology is coming up and um, how it can be benefit to the to the country, um, also for the humanity to providing the better solution. So, I mean, you want to talk about at home just to get it started. Uh, this video is there, um, and then I want to talk about we talk about the, what is artificial intelligence, and then um, this video shows you how the future of AI world will look like. And the speech here you see by our own, um, the Canadian, uh, the Armogan Ahmed. Um, he is a fantastic gentleman. Um, he works with the KPMG. I had the opportunity to meet him and talk to him personally uh, when I attended Elevate. Um, and you wanna listen to this, listen to him. He, he is a fabulous guy. Um, so let me... If technology is the enabler, humans are the transformers of that technology. And I know there's a lot of debates between Elon Musk and uh, Jack Ma for Alibaba. There was a debate that was just posted on YouTube, which is very cool. And you know, the, it's, it's sort of the doomsday scenario from Elon Musk and Jack Ma talking about the positivity of human beings. So, so I'm actually going to cover how, you know, at KPMG, we just did a survey of all the global CEOs, not all of them, a good chunk of the CEOs as well as in Canada. Interesting fact for you, almost 75% of the CEOs 
uh, believe that their employees need to innovate at a breakneck speed, meaning that they need to embrace uh, a culture of failing fast and then and then moving forward really, really, really quickly. 69% of CEOs actively are disrupting rather than being disrupted. But at the same time, uh, the data also shows that when you ask them how many of you are digitally transformed already, that you're acting like an Amazon or you're acting like an Uber, only 6% of, of them think that they are acting that way. And the number one reason that they all highlight, all the CEOs, is talent. And they say that they have to change uh, the way they train talent, attract talent, especially around the world that we're all living in. And the world that we're all living in is now a world of experiences. Right? Um, you might want to listen to the whole um, speech. And then there are some of the good uh, videos as well on Elevate. Um, they to attend this event, they charge a lot of money. Uh, I think I paid around uh, $500, if I do not mistaken the facts um, uh, to attend just to uh, attend this event to listen to this um, uh, thought leaders um, it's been um, I think five six months now so that's why they are releasing these uh, videos um, to the YouTube and that's what uh, you see this video over right here so you might want to listen uh, if you didn't attend this um, event and that way it gives the insight about what is happening. This is one of the very prominent events ha um, happening in Toronto. I think they already started um, advertisement again back for this event uh, for the 2020. Okay, so enough about the robotics. Um, Okay, then another thing, um, the coding with the Google. Um, this is something we offer normally with the, our uh, workshop. We normally do it, we run the STEAM um, education workshop on Saturdays. I'm not, I'm not here to market myself, but uh, I mean, we, we do this as a paid, okay? Um, what, what I'm saying is, if you are interested, we can, uh, you can register it, there's no charge. It's not something I'm going to market anything here, okay? Um, this is the, it's called CS First. This is something um, offered by the Google. Um, if you want, you can register your child here. Um, and this is the class code. And then um, I will assign the assignment. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, storytelling way, okay? Where the children listen to the instructor and then they try to do the coding. Um, the platform called Scratch, and um, in the Scratch, I will I personally assign this activity, and you, your children can do the activity at their own pace. Um, there is no hurry for it. Um, I will know when the children completed. If he or she completed, then I will assign the second. So it's like a step by step by step. So they they introduce to the code, and as I say, there is no charge for it, nothing. Um, you just assign for it, and and good to go. So. Um, this is um, the screenshot, um, if you wanna take it uh, with this class code, um, and then you can assign what you need to go to the g.co, the CS first, and then enter the class code, and then you'll be good to go. I will also put this on the, probably on the Facebook, uh, or inspire the Facebook page if you, are in, if you couldn't take the screenshot, okay? Uh, but it's pretty good. I mean, there are different ways how you can, um, introduce subject to the children. Um, Sometimes uh, children say that mathematics, I don't like it. But if you introduce through the games like Matthews, they say, yeah, I love it, right? So it's all about how you introduce to the subject to the children. And that's how interesting you make them. Uh, same way, this one is um, the Google done a fantastic job, I can tell you. And uh, this is pretty cool, like story. For example, you can, yeah, there's one saying that, okay, you know what? Um, you, your children got a homework, but they, you didn't do the homework. And now it's a story which saying that, okay, your teacher told you the homework, but you didn't did it. Um, so now you give an explanation why you didn't did it, right? It's a story. There's nothing real scenario, but the children come up with a different kind of um, <laughs> excuses. You know what? The alien stole my store, my books. That's why I didn't need it. Okay. Then someone is coming and said, um, okay, I forget it, but I have some magic stick. I'm going to do it within an hour. So, but they have to create a story. Whatever the story they come up with it, imagination is the limit. 
um, you come up with the story, um, you put it into the, um, the coding, and, and this coding is, is super friendly, okay? It's just drag and drop. So my, my child is five and a half, he does it, okay? So that's, that's more. Normally, the school board introduced the scratch if I'm not mistaken, normally, okay? I'm not talking about, it's all, again, depend upon teacher to teacher, but they introduce um, five or six grade, if I'm not mistaken, when I spoke with some of the educators. Um, I introduced at a grade one. Why, why not? I mean, just try it, it's fun, right? If you catch it up, then it's good. If not, then that's fine. But I mean, I'm not blaming anyone here, it's just, I mean, being as a parent, um, being ahead of the curve, I mean, we don't want to pressurize any children. This is a fun. I mean, I don't see any pressure. This is fun. Children can um, adapt it if they like it. That way you know it. Um, if they don't like it, that's also good. Like you, you see that, okay, probably my children doesn't like it. So you, you know their weakness and strength. So there is nothing losing here in trying it. So see, if you, if you like it, if you want to register it, I'll be more than happy. Uh, I will be monitoring this by the time um, about, uh, I'm in Brunton, right? So um, our school board is a field district school board. Um, I heard that I, as a parent, I received an email that they are um, going to work on to the, um, the online direct teacher kind of platform. Um, I mean, we as a, as a professional and a business, we have to help the school board as well, right? So that's the reason I'm just uh, pitching it up. By the time they introduce that kind of live um, teaching experience, then probably we don't need it. But by the time they introduce, we will continue this one. So we have something to do at home, okay? So register yourself if you, if you are interested. Um, as I said, um, this is just about us, like the Inspirely, like who we are. Um, we run the, um, the program on Saturdays. It's cost to cost base, it's not for money making or anything. It's just, I'm, I was thinking about my own children and find, trying to find out the institution about year and a half. We are thinking about whether we should go for the private schools or um, any good institution. And then after considering, um, I thought that, you know what, um, I have a know-how about the industry um, and God bless, I have some kind of passion for it uh, where I try to get the industry knowledge and put it into the, um, the children's friendly version. Uh, we did a lot of um, uh, events, um, free events um, last year. I'm not going to talk about anything. You can visit um, our Facebook page if you are interested. Um, uh, but that's what we do it, okay? So um, thank you very much. Um, as I said, um, uh, that's, that's the whole about the topics. Um, I, I already put it many of the links over here. It's called inspirely.ca and the family resources. Um, we brought it up, um, this website, within a week. Um, I mean, this thought to build up this kind of online platform, it takes a time, right? Um, we we are all struggle with our own family needs, but at the same time, if you have to do something, then um, you have to put an extra effort. So we build up this website. It's I mean, it's almost done, but if you see some hiccups, let us know. Um, so all the resources you will get it over here, um, and then you can access it. Some of the links I might update it later on. What I showed it, uh, but many of the links are already there. If you go to the inspire.ca uh, family resources, and then um, I'll also update some of the things on the Facebook page. Now on uh, the next workshop, what I'm thinking is I'm trying to do on Thursday because um, I want to find good tools. It's not just sake of doing it. Um, it's free, but at the same time, it's for a community. And when it comes to the community, we want to make sure that the content we share it is a premium, like what is really helpful to you. So the, my next target for the is we are going with the junior astronaut thing. So the last year we did many workshops with the Canadian Space Agency. Mm -hmm. um, they were generous enough uh, to accept us as a registered organization with the Canadian Space Agency. So we have some learning out of it. It's fortunate that we did it. I mean, we did it for free, okay? But that gives us an opportunity to learn many of the things about the junior astronaut. And it's a perfect time where we can share it with the community. So thanks to Canadian Space Agency. Um, so our next theme would be the junior astronauts. And um, we will be doing it on Thursday. 
uh, April 2nd. Um, I will put the new links for the registration um, because when I was um, creating the link with the Zoom, I, I bought that package with the Zoom because we need to have uh, this webinar kind of functionality. So I purchased it and then I use the Skype in my professional life. Um, the Skype, that's what you use day to day. The Zoom I'm using for the first time, I was not sure how it's going to work, but it's not the big learning curve for me because I know the Skype and we do this kind of meeting every day. So it's not something new for me. Um, and that's the reason I thought that, you know what, many times educators face that technological problem. For me, that's not an issue for me. I'm already uh, well conversed with it. And at the same time, I have passion to help children. So why not? So. Um, we will be doing this junior astronaut. We will come up with the many other uh, good tools, probably that we can use it uh, on the uh, after the Thursday and the more onwards. Okay, so I hope you like it. Um, I appreciate if you have any feedback. Um, and then, if you are an educator, like if you are watching live, I do not know who is online right now. Um, I show a few of my known families, but later on, if you are watching this video on the Facebook and if you're an educator, and if you like to be, um, like to share something, I already have a Zoom video. I already purchased um, the package for one month, okay? Um, you do not need to purchase anything new. You just tell me what you are going to see. I just need to make sure that the content what we are going to share is, is useful to the community, okay? And the parents who are spending a time is worth for them. That's the whole purpose. And then uh, we can do it more frequently, uh, like every day or every other alternate day. Um, right now it's me, I'm doing it. Um, so let me know if you're interested uh, as an educator, then you can send me an email. It's called family time um, at the rate inspiredly.ca. Um, again, it's a family time at inspiredly.ca. You let me know and we will do it uh, together. I mean, we as a parents, we have to come together and um, we can help each other and make this time better um, by learning about these tools and opportunity probably we would not have done if the situation uh, had not arise, right? So let's find the opportunity and build a stronger community. All right, so uh, let me see if you have any questions. Um, I don't see any questions. I hope I did well, um, not sure. If you have any questions, there's a Q and A. Um, you can you can go for it, and then you can put in your question. I don't see any chat window here. See the participants here for sure. Chat we have here. You can put in a chat as well. I hope you were able to hear at least clearly. If you, someone can um, confirm it. Okay, perfect. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yep. It was actually, we were talking with the, um, um, in our, in our dad, Sanjeev, and, um, that's the whole thing come up uh, other day. Um, Sanjeev uh, used to live nearby my uh, neighborhood. He's a wonderful person. Um, so uh, that's how the whole idea came up. And that's what we see today. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, I'll send the registration link for the Thursday. Okay, all right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.